In this video, we will explore in a bit more depth the concept of equivalence, and we'll do an exercise that really uh, allows us to practice some of the time value of money calculation uh, techniques that we've learned thus far in the course. So take a moment, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So this is a sort of a fun problem uh, to test your time value of money calculation skills. And uh, in the problem, we're given two cash flow diagrams. And I'll recreate the cash flow diagrams here. So we have a time frame of uh, five years. And the first cash flow diagram, we're given positive cash flows of two different repeating values. This one, I'll just draw them like this. This is $100 and this is $300. Three payments of $300, two payments of $100. And then we're given another cash flow diagram. Again, five years. This time we're given an unknown amount and we're also given sort of a bit of a challenge in that there's a gap in here. So we're asked, what is the value of these payments, C, that creates equivalence between these two cash flows, um, assuming an interest rate of 12%. So like I said, this is just kind of a kind of a fun problem for us to practice and explore some of the techniques for time value of money calculations that we've learned. So there's a number of different ways you could do this problem. I think the way I'd like to do it, and I think perhaps the most straightforward way, would be to Take these cash flows, the known dollar amounts, and move them back to the present. If I move these cash flows back to the present using an interest rate of 12%, I can then compare that value or set that value equal to the present value of these two unknown cash flows. So I can also bring these cash flows back to the same time. If I bring them back to the same time, I can set them equal of course, using all of the correct techniques for time value of money and hopefully solve for the value of C. So if I convert these cash flows back to the present, it would look something like this. Um, well, first let's look at these two $100 payments. The $100, moving it back to the present, I would multiply by the P given A, we're going to assume that this is an annuity over two period, periods, the P given A for 12% and two periods. So that moves these payments to here. Plus, I'm going to have the $300 payments, and I'll use the P given A factor at 12%, and this time I'll use n equal to 3. Now be very careful because what that does is it takes these three $300 payments and moves them to here. Right? Because if you think about how the P given A formula works or the P given A compound interest factor works, really this pattern of three repeating payments using the P given A factor moves the value here. So this would be the value of P, but I don't want it there. I want it back here. So whatever this amount turns out to be, I then have to multiply it by the P given F factor for 12% and two periods, because I'm moving it back one, two. So this expression really gives us the present worth of all of these cash flows 
um, at time t equal to zero. Now, similarly, if I look at these cash flows and I set the, um, the value equal to um, this value at, at time t equal to zero, I'll do, it, I'll do it underneath. Let's say that this is, this is going to be um, P1 and we'll call this P2. So we'll say that this, this expression is the value of P1 and P2 will be our unknown value of C times, in fact it's the same factor, and where I've got two repeating payments, I'm going to assume that they're an A, bring them back to, to P using the P given A factor, plus my unknown value of C times the P given A factor for 12% and two periods, but that, that brings the value of these two payments to here. I need to then bring it back to, to time t equal to zero, so I'll use the P given F factor at 12% for one, two, three periods. Okay, so now yeah, I, can, I can then set P1 equal to P2. And if I set P1 equal to P2, I would end up with a big long expression where I'd have this amount being equal to this amount. Um, if you look at these two expressions, this compound interest factor, the P given A, 12% and two, seems to occur in a bunch of places, um, occurs in three of the terms, so it might be advantageous to divide through by that, um, which is what I'll do. I'll, I'll first look at the P1. So the, the P1 would simply become 100 if I divide through by that factor, plus 300 times, well, I actually don't have the P given A factor for 12 and 2, I have the P given F, so I'd end up still having all of the same factors in this part of the expression. And then I would actually be dividing by the P given A at 12% and two. So that's this expression with each of these terms divided by the P given A 12% and two. And that's gonna be equal to C. So again, this expression with the P given A 12% and two divided through plus C times, that's going to disappear because I've divided through by that, P given F at 12% and 3. Okay, so um, at this point it may be advantageous to sort of figure out what some of these factors are. There's not too much more simplification I could do. Well, I could, I could actually just bring the C out here and say that this is the same as 1 plus P given F 12% and 3. Okay, so, um, so let's figure out what some of these factors are and we can solve for the value of C. So simply I have 100 plus 300 times um, you should check to see that you can also find these same values in your compound interest tables. It's good practice. And then divide by this compound interest factor. That's going to be equal to C times 1 plus this compound interest factor, which is 0 0.711. Seven, eight. Well, I can I can work out what this is. Divide by one point seven one one seven eight, and I can solve the equation for C equal to two hundred and fifty six dollars and ninety six cents. So, like I said at the beginning, this is just kind of a fun problem to try to see if we can figure out 
uh, what value of C produces this equivalence with this cash flow diagram for an I equal to 12%. Um, if you'd like to check this, you could go back, take the 256.96, multiply it by the compound interest factor, P given A, 12% and 2, here, and then do it again here times the P given F factor and see what you end up with. I think you should end up with, you should end up with a value of um, 743.42, or 41. And if you do the same thing over here, using the same compound interest factors, you should end up with 743.42. Kind of losing ink here, but that's okay, I'm pretty much done. Anyway, um, using the compound interest factors, you'll end up um, showing that this value of C is actually produces equivalence within one cent, if you'd like to go back and check that. Um, but anyway, good practice problem for time value of money calculations and a good way to illustrate the concept of equivalence.